Hey everyone, hey everyone, this is Mike Andes, you're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Today is episode 125. I'm going to be sharing with you my advice to my generation of entrepreneurs, even teenagers and those who are just wanting to get started in their entrepreneurial journey. Before we get started though, big thank you to our sponsor for today, which is LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the website and sign up for the webinar. We have one this Thursday. If you have a landscaping business, a lawn care business, a mowing company, or if you want to learn about service-based businesses in general and how to market your services, check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. Sign up for the webinar. I'm going to be teaching it this Thursday. It's for one solid hour, live and in person. You can ask me all your questions, and I'll get those answered for you live. So, landscapebusinesscourse.com. Now... Today won't be a long episode. I'm just going to share with you uh, what my advice would be to someone my age or someone in their early 20s or even teens that is wanting to get started in entrepreneurship and starting their own business and all of that. Now let me preface this whole thing by saying that I believe 90% of people shouldn't actually start a business. Okay, so... Uh, like whether you're coming on YouTube or coming on Facebook Live right now or you're listening to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher and all that good place. Um, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Like 90% of the people that are on planet Earth or in the U.S. or whatever you want to call it, like 90% of people should not start a business. That's why 90% of businesses fail is because there's people that have started businesses that aren't entrepreneurs or they... They, aren't, they don't have the personality type, they don't have the skills, they don't have the ability. Um, not saying they can't get those things, but I'm just saying they should not start a business. 90% of people should have a job where they are employed and are given a paycheck. Okay, now you're not going to hear that from a lot of other people who are business coaches and all of that because they say everyone should be entrepreneurs and you know they, they paint this lifestyle of being on beaches, not doing any work, employing other people, everyone else is doing your work for you. And it's just not true. And I hate when other entrepreneurs or business owners, I should say, when other business owners give their opinion to young people and push on them that they need to own their own business. Like this is something we're not talking about in our community of entrepreneurship is how many people should not be starting a business and the amount of depression and all the things that follow and, and, and not just depression but like financial straits that people get into because they try to go after this dream of entrepreneurship and they're just not cut out for it. They're not cut out for the long hours. They'd rather be with their family. It's not aligning with their goals. Their personality isn't to be with people, it's uh, more or less to be a technician within a company, whether it be operating equipment or coding behind a computer or taking orders from someone else. And I think it's, like, like when, if you're a business owner and you tell other people, oh, you, you know, you should start a business too, you know, it kind of gives you this sense of ego and pride, it kind of gives you this sense of like, oh, I've made it and you should too kind of thing. And it, it, when you tell someone else, like as a business owner and you tell someone else, oh, you should start a business and you start talking about how great your life is and everything, I just think that kind of is such a pro proud move in a negative way. Not like pride as in like, yes, I've done it. It's like pride as in like, I'm better than you and you should be like me. Like I think that's super egotistical and I, and I don't think it's right. Like really, an entrepreneur... It's because, the, the reason I'm an entrepreneur and I have a small business is because I really feel like I would be the worst employee if I went and worked for someone else. I wouldn't be able to stick around for year after year. I'd be like, just get, I'd be the guy with 20 jobs on his resume, kind of going after the next thing. Um, I would be the guy that is always coming with new ideas that he wants to implement, but I can't how I can't because upper management says you can't do this and you can't do that, right? Like, I would be a horrible employee at following directions and following the tried and true uh, culture of a, a, a company that's been around for 50, 20, 50, 20, 50 years, you know? So, like, I would be a horrible employee and that's why I have to start, I have to, have to be a business owner, okay? I think it's so wrong, though, for me to go out and tell people that because I have got successful in the business world, that I am so great and so wonderful, and now they should also try to try to be like me. And, it, and you might not say it in those words, like I'm just exaggerating, but you're essentially saying that when you say, you know, you should start a business and 
you should uh, stop your job and, you know, you're just making money for someone else and all of this stuff, right? Like, oh, I don't mean to get, like, overworked about this stuff, but... It, gets, it just annoys me that so many people and business coaches and even successful entrepreneurs try to push their lifestyle or you know their grind on everybody else. And so I think if you're listening to this, you're probably not part of the 90%. You're probably part of the 10% of people who listen to podcasts and are crazy enough to read books about business and care about... Like, you're probably... You probably are an entrepreneur. But... If anything, if you say, okay, yes, I am part of the 10% that should start a business and, you know, am a small business owner and I am entrepreneurial, like, maybe all I'm doing this, this then, all I'm saying this for is then that you don't need to push that on everybody else. Because you're responsible if you go out and tell someone that they need to start a business and they go do it and they're just not cut out for it, they don't have the skills, they don't have the ability, they don't have the personality, they don't have the grind, they'd rather just spend time with their family and they want the security and they can't you know they can't handle the stress of going into debt and banking payroll and leading other people they can't handle that and then they fail you are responsible for telling them that they should have gone into business and that they that they they're making it so elusive and like the thing they need to do you're responsible and i'm not going to be guilty of that on the podcast and i hope that other business owners out there would begin to think about this before they start spewing their their ideas and their rhetoric of small business ownership is for everyone. Remember when you tell someone that. That they have a 90% chance of failing. Just statistically, 90% of businesses in America fail within the first five years. And so when you tell someone that they should start a business, you are taking a 90% chance that your advice is going to backfire on you and them, it's gonna, and it's going to put them in a bad financial position. Like, you don't hear me on here telling you everyone should be entrepreneurs. We talk about, you know, how to start, grow, or save your business. I'm assuming the person, when they ask the question, is an entrepreneur. In other words, they, they've tried the 9-to-5 thing, it doesn't work. They, want, they don't mind the 100-hour grind a week. They don't mind leading people, and they don't mind being independent and risk, and all of these things that are part of the entrepreneurial journey. So that's my little spew. Sorry for that. Um, but but that, that, that I was just thinking about that a lot this week. Um, yeah. So, anyways, but then also, like, my advice to young people now, this is the part that I will, I will give some advice on, is to, if you know you are entrepreneurial, and you're in your teens, your 20s, I still consider you young if you're 30 and 40. In the entrepreneurial world, like, you still have 30, 40 years left if you're at 40. Um, you're just beginning your career, really. And so you might look at me and say, oh, you're so young. But, like, if you're 30, 40, 45, like, you still got a lot. Like, the most lucrative years of your career are still ahead of you. And so I consider you still young. And so if anyone in those age categories are, like, starting, even if you're 60 and you're starting your entrepreneurial journey, what would my, my advice be to you? My advice would be to, one... Start a service-based business or something that is grassroots that you're going to actually generate revenue from day one. The reason I say service-based business is because typically you can do that because you're, you're trading time, dollars for time, dollars for hours. And I would start that company and scale it. And what I mean by scale is like get employees and start developing your leadership skills and learn about pricing and how to you know scale a business, create systems and procedures and all of that. I would do that. And then I would also start a side hustle in the mediapreneur, mediapreneur world. And what I mean by that is start a blog, start a YouTube channel, start a website that you can later on get like ad revenue from. Start start um, a social media around, and this, this, this mediapreneurships thing should be around something that you love, something you enjoy, something you're passionate about, and something that you don't mind working several years for free before you actually start seeing some money gen being generated. And eventually, like when we're talking five, ten years down the road, you might switch from that service-based business, sell it, and then jump over this mediapreneurship thing once it's really started to take off, okay? And so the reason I would tell young entrepreneurs to do this instead of, so the, the alternate route is you 
go try to go to Silicon Valley, you raise money, you start a tech company, and then you start trying to essentially beat your burn rate and finally become profitable. That's one way of doing it. If you have a great idea, awesome. But I wouldn't try to chase that if I didn't have an idea, I didn't have something that I was already had in my mind of a business to start in the tech world. What I would do, and what I've really done, like some people think, well, how can you say that? Well, this is exactly what I've done. I started a lawn care business, and as I scale that up the past three years, two years ago, I started the podcast. For two years, well, it was a year and a half, didn't make a single penny off of it, but I loved it so much. I loved answering the questions. I didn't mind spending, you know, 30 hours a week answering questions at night after working long days with the lawn care and landscaping business. So I've scaled the landscaping business up, and I think in a few years, I'll jump from the landscaping business, I'll sell it, once it's scaled up, have 10, 20, 30 employees or whatever, and I'll jump over and do more of the podcast stuff. I'll start working on courses like we've already, I've already started doing now. I've started making that transition. So what I would suggest you do is, you know, it just happens that my passion is around business and it's around entrepreneurship and helping other entrepreneurs, right? But yours might be sports. So you might be going and doing a pressure washing company, but then you love sports. And so what I would suggest you do is start a pressure washing business generate revenue, get some hard skills of entrepreneurship of hiring people and marketing and pricing and talking to customers and all of that. You're going to get great skills and then at the same time you work on a blog or some sort of newscast or webinar or a great social networking feed that you start generating an audience around and then in five, ten years, you sell the company once it's an actual viable business making good money, and then you're able to jump over this other thing that should be by then making a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year, and you can jump over and start doing something that you love. Okay, so that's my two cents worth, right? It's like I just I just feel that people don't see the value sometimes because they, they they see that the, the company is raising a hundred million, two hundred million dollars for some tech startup or some app or some new technology and they're like, oh, that's the thing, right? And that is, but you have to realize, how, and that's great and everything, I'm not diminishing that. I'm just saying that like, that is such a small percentage of entrepreneurs that go down that route and are successful in that route that I would recommend that the, the vast majority of people, number one, start a business and actually get hard skills. like Really know how to price things and know how to create a website and know how to do these things like these are hard skills that you can learn and how to lead a team and hire people and how to fire people. Like th this is real skills. Learn those, but at the same time, don't diminish this other thing, which I think a lot of people are overlooking the power and um, exactly the scalability of a media printer. Someone that has a blog, someone that has a podcast, someone that is creating an audience around whatever it is. It might be fly fishing, it might be cooking, it might be sewing, whatever you're passionate about, creating this audience and creating this platform on media printership, on Facebook, on, on uh, social media, on YouTube, on you know, music, like there's so many music sites and like all these things that you can do that around your passion that will take years to create the platform and create the audience but you can eventually monetize it and that's what I, that's my transition right now right like i still have the business it's been three years and finally like the podcast is starting to monetize itself i created landscapebusinesscourse.com which is you know starting to make money and we have like it's just like we're still pre-selling a lot right now because the videos are still being uh in post-production so that's why, like the webinar if you get on this thursday plug plug um it's gonna be uh i think it's like 60 percent off the regular price because we're pre-selling it right now the actual course part uh but like that's the transition that i'm making into something that i'm more passionate about something that i love to do something that like i'm not super passionate about mowing lawns but it makes me money and we don't even mow lawns like we like landscaping like like i'm not the guy to be like super psyched out to get into an excavator uh it's it just makes me money and so I'm gonna I'm gonna put my attention on it. I'm gonna make the business work. I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna get employees, and then I'm gonna focus on this other thing in the background, and eventually uh, jump over. Or or you know you can always you might be the guy that wants like for me I kind of like the balance between the two, right? Because I feel like when I'm online. And I'm doing courses. I'm doing webinars. I'm doing answering people's questions on email. 
or sending them Skype stuff or what do you Skype call all the time and stuff for, for businesses and companies that uh, write questions in. And that's kind of like all internet and kind of seems like clouds like up here, right? Like it just kind of, it's, it's, I don't see the people face to face. I can't give them a handshake. Right. But then like the landscaping business kind of like brings me back to the dirt. It's like up here's the sky, down here's the dirt. And it kind of a nice balance I have right now. And I really like it of being online and being able to create a business that's super scalable and because of the, you know, the advent of the internet and it's very portable, I can do it wherever I am in the world, but then also have the, having this other thing, the landscaping business that can, it keeps me grounded, keeps me you know, sharpening my entrepreneurial appetite for more business and for actually hiring people. And I feel like I gain my, my knowledge and skills and experience from the landscaping business and I'm able to help so many people that are in the exact same place on the, and I'm able to help them on the podcast. And so I really feel like that I like where I'm at right now and, but I, like, I still know where I'm going. Like this is all very intentional of what I'm doing right now, how, how I'm building this whole thing out and where I'm going. Like I know, I know why I started the lawn care business. It wasn't because I'm like a love love it. It was to make money, generate a business and get hard skills. And then I want to focus more on the podcast, helping other entrepreneurs and, and with the courses and really giving what I've learned now to other people. And it just happens to be that my passion is around business. It might be for you totally something else. And I would suggest you at like this whole, as, 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 as technology becomes more and more mobile, this is going to become more and more important for the people that I still feel that the, like people who are getting in now with podcasts and blogs and creating the audience and all that, I think they're still not early adopters, but we're kind of like, we're still early in this whole trend of going more online. I still believe that. I still believe that the people that are starting now are going to have in 10 years, a huge jump on the people that like realize like, oh, this social media thing isn't going away. And like technology is going to become more and more mobile and more and more in your eye and in, on your wrist. And like, it's going to become more and more a part of the way we live. And so if you can get in now and become a part of a contributor and a creator in that space, mediapreneurship, you know, giving other people value, reporting on live events, like, like whatever it is you are passionate about, I feel that's where Oh, you're going to see huge success. So that's, that's it for today, everyone. I want to cut it off there. This has been episode 125 of the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Check out the website, businessbootcamppodcast.com. Send me a question on how to start, grow, or save your business. I answer every single one in person, and whether it be on the show or just off with an email or we set up a Skype call or something. But I will definitely want to answer your question. And uh, if you haven't already, check out Landscape Business Course. Dot com. There's a seven minute promo video. You're getting some good content just from watching that on the five, and it tells you about the five things that keep your business small. And if you want to get on a live webinar with me, just right underneath that video, just sign up. And on Thursday, I can answer all of your questions live and in person. This is Mike Andes. You're listening to the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Signing off.